You guys liked the previous video, so five more JavaScript DOM methods. Okay, so starting us off, we have scroll into view. So this method here, when you call it on an element, the browser is going to scroll until that element is in view by the user. Okay, so as an example right here, as we can see, I've got a bunch of paragraphs on this page. And I've also got this special paragraph right here, which has an ID of important dash P. So we're going to be calling the scroll into view method on that paragraph and see what happens. So going back inside the JavaScript, uh, we can see here, I of course have got my element by ID. I'm now gonna say some paragraph dot scroll into view. Now, I'm gonna pass in here an object and this object gonna have a single property called behavior. So setting behavior to smooth now, when it scrolls into view, it's also gonna make it look smooth, okay? So I'll save this right here, go back in the browser, do a refresh and as we can see, upon refreshing the page, the browser is going to scroll down until that paragraph is visible by the user. Do it again, as we can see right there, it's scrolling down. So this, uh, this, this method here obviously is super useful for building user interfaces, but make sure that you check the compatibility table because this is still in a working draft, but it's compatible on many browsers. Next up, we've got the contains method, all right? So this one here is gonna return you a Boolean true false value depending on if the element that you pass in uh, is contained within the element that you call it on, okay? So as an example right here, I have some container. Now, we've also got this some other component, okay? Now we're gonna check if this some other component is a descendant or is contained within the container. Okay, so right down here, we're gonna say console.log, then pass in here some container dot contains right here, then passing through some other component. Now, of course, if this component was inside the container, we're gonna get true here, otherwise we're gonna get false. So this right here comes in handy with the event listeners. If you wanna make sure that, you know, some, some button or some sort of uh, box or element the user has clicked on is part of something else, you can definitely use this method to, you know, of course, assist you in those scenarios. Now, one of my favorite methods here is clone node, all right? So this one here does what the name suggests. It allows you to make a copy or clone a particular node. So in most cases, you're gonna be cloning elements, all right? So as an example right here, I've selected both a list with a class of some list and a list item, which is found within that list with a class of some dash li, okay? So the HTML looks like this right here, as we can see, got the unordered list and we have the list item, all right? So we're gonna firstly be cloning the list item, all right? So in the browser, we currently have something like this. So going back inside, the JavaScript, let's drop down here. We're gonna say list item dot, uh, dot clone node right here. Now, we're gonna call it just like that and now it's gonna give you a copy of that node. So, we can now say something like list dot append child and we're gonna be appending that list item or that clone of the list item to the parent list. So if I save this, go back in the browser, do a refresh here, we get the second uh, uh, list item right there. As we can see though, uh, it does not contain the text. That's because we made uh, uh, essentially a shallow copy. So you can actually pass in a true to this method here of clone node to do a deep copy, which also includes its descendants, which also means the text itself. So save this, go back in the browser, now do a refresh and we get the text as well. Okay, we're gonna be doing a second test here, actually copying the list itself and just appending it to the body, all right? So dropping down here, we're now gonna say document.body.appendChild and now make a copy of the entire list, including those two list items. So we'll say list.cloneNode once again and pass in true, save this back in the browser, refresh, and we get the whole copy right there. And as we can see, it's also going to retain the classes on those uh, items and, you know, any other attributes and things like that. All right, so next up, we've got the after method. So this one here, you might be familiar with if you watched my previous uh, five must know uh, JavaScript DOM methods, or you're familiar with both prepend and append. So this one here is gonna let you uh, insert some either text or some new elements onto the document, but this time it's gonna be as siblings after the element that you called it 
on. Okay, so as an example right here, we have a paragraph in the HTML. So we're going to be inserting a button and some text right below this paragraph as opposed to inside of it, which is done by prepend or append. Okay, so going inside the JavaScript right here, we have the paragraph tag selected and also I've created a new button. So we're going to say here my button dot text content equal to a new button just like that. And now we're going to simply call the after method. So we're going to say my paragraph. So starting from the paragraph, we're going to say after and then pass in here the button and a second argument. So as many as you want here, we can also provide some text. So we can say something like a new button, just like that. And as per usual with these kinds of methods, if you were to pass in HTML like this, for example, uh, the HTML is gonna be rendered in plain text and not actually be you know, executed properly. So I'm just gonna save this right here, go in the browser and we have the paragraph right there, do a refresh here and we have that appended button and the text after the paragraph as a new sibling, hence the name after. And saving the best to last here, we have the remove method, all right? Now, the remove method is gonna allow you to remove the element that you call the method on. Now, the reason why I say best to last is because, well, in the past, it used to be quite difficult to actually remove an element from the document, all right? You used to have to call the parent, then say remove child, pass it in, but this here is really simple. So, let's just say, for example, you got some element on your page. We can now simply say some element dot remove just like that. If we run this code here, that element is gonna be gone from the document, never to be seen again. So, really simple way of removing elements just like that. And that is all for today's video, guys. If you liked it, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.